What's up, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Food Community Podcast. I'm your host, Rich Homie Juan. I got my other host with me right here, LA Icon. What up? Say we got a real special guest in the building, Noel G. How was parking down there, my G? What up, play? Chilling, Doc. Parking was cool, man. I ain't <laughs> Are you sure you didn't have p- trouble I parking? I gate around my car, so I'm straight. The the fine gentleman down there built you a gate while you were there? Uh, yeah, it's all made out of tarp, duct tape, but whatever works, works nowadays. They got you. It was rip a car cover, you know, just stretch it a little bit. <laughs> That's fire. There's ways around stuff. Ghetto tricks, ghetto tricks. So uh, before we start. Oh, I thought we already started. No, nah, no, nah, I mean, we did, but we haven't. Oh, yeah, I got you. So you start before you start when you don't start, but you start. I got you. As long as you know it started. Exactly. And that's why you're not confused when it starts. Because it started when it didn't start, but it started. It started for I sure. I ain't mad at a start. Let's go. So shout out to Emperor's Choice. My man Noel doesn't necessarily participate. You guys know I don't. But uh, some of Noel's fine people that he brought with him do. So Emperor's Choice will be bestowing upon you some, some of the devil's lettuce. But yeah. So shout out tempers. Have you ever been in trouble lately? Like, have you been in trouble at all lately with the law or anything like that? I get in trouble all the time, bro. Good is boring. You know what I'm saying? Have you heard of a uh, Nicholas Rosenberg? No, but I have a feeling I'm about to right now. No, yeah, he's one of the best attorneys, and oh, he'll got get you. he'll the top dog. He's actually really is the like top dog. Kinda, yeah. Oh, I got you. I got you. So shout out to Nicholas Rosenberg. Got Link in the description. Places, places. 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 What you getting at? Nah, that who's a high guy in a he's, high spot. Oh, got you. He's top of the top. Hopefully he never gets low. Okay, cool. Man, it works for me. <laughs> but now, nah, with all that being said, shout out to Nick, shout out to Emperor's Choice, and of course, shout out to Royalty Honey. But with all that being said, um, that guy earlier in my life. you still could. Yeah, if something comes up. Who knows what happens when you go back downstairs with the bums. You never know until you know what's right. That's crazy. Right outside of Food's community. It's a setup, homie. This ain't a podcast. It's a setup, that's <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. All my sponsors will assist you. They'll be at your they'll be at your disposal for a low fee. I will, man. And I will get a percentage. I got bell money. You want to tighten that, my boy, so that way it doesn't keep yeah, sliding yeah. on you? I don't know why. Oh, the, the next one down. The next one down. I you guys stole it from one of the guys outside. They actually sold it to us for the low. That's why it's all fucked up oh, like that. I gave him two cigarettes and a beer. Whatever works, bro. You got it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Put it in. CSS right here made the deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Where'd you grow up, my brother? Orange County. And then when I was 15 years old, I moved to LA. Was in Gardena for about 20 years, and then I Jeez. moved back to Orange County. How did you like living in Gardena versus uh, Orange County? Because you li- moved when you were 15, so you're already familiar with life for what it's worth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, it wasn't really that much different, to keep it honest with you, man, because I was hanging out with the thugs in Orange County. The only thing was, when I went to L.A., it was more of them. (laughs) There was no real difference, to keep it honest, man. I mean, there's a lot of hoods in Orange County that, you know, people don't give credit for, but there's... there's No, there's definitely some activated places. Oh, no, I know, like Santa Ana's are Compton, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like, yeah, so... What city in Orange County, if you don't mind me asking, were you... I was all over. Oh, I see. You're just bouncing around. Yeah, I was bouncing around. I was doing the couch tour for a while. I'm f- very familiar with that, so I get it. Been there, done that. So it was rough growing up then, huh? A little bit? It was not until the age of 13. Up to 13, I was straight. It was cool. Class home, everything was cool. My dad left me at 13, and I went literally from a middle class home to that within two weeks to living on the streets homeless. <clears throat> I've suffered slightly similar circumstances, but um, but so how did you deal with that? I mean, my, my story is a little different, you know, because it was funny. I didn't grow up poor. I, I like I said, I my dad, no, yeah, shit was cool. Yeah, everything was straight. Like I was, I had clothes in my closet, food on the table, everything was good. And then um, at thirteen, my dad pretty much gave me five hundred dollars and said, "Good luck to me." So I started hanging out with the wrong crowd. That's where I started learning how to get cholo-wise, gangsterized, whatever you want to call it. And um, then for two years, my life was a mess. You know, I was sleeping at donut stores, laundry mats. Sometimes I didn't have a place to sleep. And then you know what's up? When you're not paying the bills at someone's house, your welcome runs out eventually. Mm-hmm. So I did all that. And then, um, but yeah, I mean, I just dealt with it because I had to deal with it. Of course, it's not a freaking uh, conscious choice. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. And it's not like you're old enough to go get a job. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 
How what? How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, no, I'll tell you straight up. I know. I, I know. I, how old do you think, real quick, and then I'll tell you. Uh, maybe like realistically, what maybe forty six. So oh, sh- damn, bro. You ain't a good host, bro. What's up? Like, was I supposed to tell I'm you, Dick? Playing. Like 30? I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> he, went right for the, he went right for the juggler thing. No, I'm just playing. Now I'm 48. See, I'm damn close. Hey, I know, I know. But most people say like 35. 35. I'm 35. Well, there's no way. And I was. I know how old I was when I saw you on already. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No, I feel I it. I tell people that three tricks to staying young, bro, is no smoking, no drinking, and no stress. You do those three things, bro. You're gonna stay young and fresh. You're aging very well. Pause. You gotta, you gotta exfoliate, bro. You gotta moisture. <laughs> I don't. That's yeah. why I look like this. Oh god. Nah, but nah, you um, look good, bro. Straight up. You I'm surviving. You blue skin. You straight. Psst, I like that. So, um, what changed at 15 for you to go to LA? <sighs> Was the acting. So. Oh, so you got put on super young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I've damn been, good. Yeah, I've been doing it since 15, man. I've been doing it over 30 years. How'd that take place? So it literally is a right place, right time story. Oh, yeah. Dating some girl. She wanted to be an actress. Perfect. Not me. Mm-hmm. And um, long story short, I went with her to an acting class one day. It was a producer who was sitting in class. He was scouting talent that day. Thought it was kind of funny, whatever. He comes up to me after the class and he says, hey, you want to be in a Taco Bell commercial? I thought he was on some BS, whatever. I thought it wasn't real. I gave him my number. It ended up being real. Two weeks later, first thing I ever did in my life was a commercial for Taco Bell. I made a lot of money. I went from nothing to bling bling overnight. And then that's where it kind of took off. But at the time, I didn't know about residual checks. Mm-hmm. I was ignorant to that. You know, I'm 15. I didn't know. You don't know shit. So I thought it was like, you got to work to get paid, work to get paid, work to get paid. But I did this commercial. They only ran it. I mean, I only worked one day in my life. Of course. For up to a year. So I got paid for a whole year for one day's work. So what ends up happening was um, when this all this money was coming in, like when I was cashing the checks, I literally thought that I was breaking the law. That's when I needed your boy, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, it got a little weird. And so I called up the guy who hooked me up with the commercial. And I said, how come I keep on getting paid for this commercial? And he goes, that's how actors get paid. I said, what? I said, well, I want to be an actor. And then that's, so he introduced me to a manager friend of his. And then that's how it kicked off. I hooked up with him. And so I can honestly say, I, but whenever I share this story, I always like to share this. I got to make this clear. I'll be straight up and real. When I first got into the acting business, it was all about the money. Of I course. So much money so quickly. But as I started doing it, it became a true passion because it was just a fun job and it was hella cool. I love my job because I never do the same thing. I'm always in a different place, meet different people. It's always something different. But, um, and then the money is just a bonus now, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I'm always like, you know, it's really true. Like if you love what you do, you're not working. Would you mind disclosing how much you think you made off that single Taco Bell commercial? Yeah, people ask me all, that all the time and I never really tell people that, but I made enough to know that. Like what, a hundred? Well, I'll I'll tell you a funny story. This is how I tell people, and you would only know this if you made that type of money, tell you a true story. So when I did Fast and the Furious, at that time, I didn't really know. So they made you sag that day on the Taco Bell. No, 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 no. No? No, they they do what they call a Taft Taft Hartley. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar. That happened to me. Yeah, and then you got to do like, you got to do three jobs. in order To get your three vouchers. Exactly, in order to be, well, you could do it that way, or you could get Taft Hartley, and then they give you a time period of when you could join. I forget what the details were back then because that was 30 plus years ago. Of course. I know what it is now, fast forwarding, but I'm just saying back then. Back then you get tap hard lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agents, they handled it all, and I didn't really know, like, the, you know, the depth of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they took a little $1,500 out of your pay or something, called it a day. I, I didn't care. As long as I had money and I was straight, they could be straight too. No, I didn't mean for that. I meant, like, for the tap, like, to join SAG or whatever. Oh, no. Back then, yeah, it was, no, it was way cheaper than that. Back then it was like 750. Yeah, that makes it sense. Like, it was like 600 bucks. It wasn't that much money. Now fast forward. Now I think it's now. I think it's like 3,000. Yeah, it's like 3,500. That's vicious. Yeah, yeah, no. I, Inflation. No, I it was, uh, yeah, cheap. I, I think, if I remember, I'm not sure, but I think it was like 750, I think it was, or 600. Bucks. Was that a speaking role that you had? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's dope. It was a speaking role, bro. So, yeah, I was one of the main characters in the commercial. And, uh. I'm going to Google this. I did already. I tried to search it. It doesn't exist. It was at the time that Taco Bell was doing the super fish tacos. I don't even remember that. It didn't make it. So (laughs) they had. Was that the ad? 
Yeah, that was the commercial. <laughs> the tacos, but they were only in Taco Bell for like a year, two years, and then they were out. They weren't very popular. They were trying to do the Baja style or what? I, psh, at that time, I don't know, bro. They were trying to do what they were doing. But I feel it. Super fish tacos, and all I know is it didn't make it. <laughs> Excuse me. It flopped. It, kicked, it got curved. It got curved, yeah. So then what was your next big role after that? So after that, you know, it was kind of funny, man. I did a bunch of industrial stuff. You know, I didn't even do big stuff. So after that, I used to be the guy, like, if you get hired at Burger King, I used to be the guy, like, this is how you wrap a hamburger. This is how you use the cash register. If you get hired from Walmart, I was like the guy stealing CDs. <laughs> and I was like the security video for the security guards. So when they're in the store, this is the proper procedures of what you do and how you're supposed to handle that situation. <laughs> That's tight. Industrial videos for like, even for doctors, I did the, um, where they would perform surgeries, but there was a video showing people how to perform surgeries. Of course. I was like the patient, you know? So I like, I was like the sick guy. That's like, dope. No, yeah, I feel it. Back then, bro. Like, you know, you got to remember like back then they were breaking bread. Like, I was getting paid like fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a day, and back then that was that crazy. Was, uh, I mean, I remember back then, you know, when you could make a hundred dollars last a month, but you know, nowadays we spend a thousand dollars a day, like it ain't nothing. You know what I mean? Like the mm -hmm. money has changed or whatever. I remember back then when I can get a Happy Meal for two, three bucks. I can fill up my car for like eight or nine dollars. Like you know, a hundred dollars lasted a month, and that a hundred back then was like a thousand. So back then. When I was doing these industrial videos, I was getting paid 1500 which was a lot of money, you know, at that time. So the money was just pouring in, like, left and right, and it was crazy, but, yeah. That's amazing. What was your first big break? So Pop that's what I was going to tell you about the, 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 the money story, but um, we went kind of another direction. So I'll, I'll tell you a true story real quick and tell you my first big break that this ties into both was uh, Fast and the Furious, that, to be real. That was the first movie that kind of started the roller coaster, right? But uh, it was funny, because you can't even make this up. I was working a bunch of nine to five jobs in between doing all that industrial stuff. And at the same time, I was going out for television shows and movies and things like that, but nothing was really taken off, taken flight, nothing ever hit, landed, whatever. So um, long story short, fast forward, I do uh, Fast and the Furious. It was the first time in my life ever that I made the biggest, fattest check legitimately <laughs> in my life, right? And uh, it was funny because I was going to the same bank for eight years, same bank for eight years when I worked all my nine to five jobs. I worked at Walmart, I worked at Kmart, I worked at Toys R Us, KB Toy Store. Um, I worked at a place called Pizza Mania, it was an independent pizza spot, delivered pizzas. I worked um, Denny's, Olive Garden, like I worked everywhere, a bunch of nine to five jobs. Same bank, eight years. So all of a sudden... You come in with a big, big, big check. I fast and the furious. <laughs> come in. I never forget it like it was yesterday. I come in, and the lady at the window goes, do you have a financial advisor? And I said, no. She goes, you should go in the back and talk to a financial advisor. I said, all right. So I go in the back. All of a sudden, the manager of the bank comes out. He goes, hey, how you doing, man? I just want to introduce myself. I'm the head manager here. You know, whatever. He goes, this is the assistant manager. Anything you need. And they do the whole spiel for like 10 minutes, right? Telling me what I can do with the money, what they can do for me, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, all you guys are funny. I go, you know, I've been coming to this bank for eight years. And not once have any of you come out the woodworks to say what's up, say hello, nothing like that. And all of a sudden, I'm depositing a fat check. And now you guys all want to come out? and say, what's up? I go, F all you guys, man. I go, put my money in the bank and I'm out. I said, if you guys would have done that before in the eight, I might've entertained you, but now you're doing it. And I was, I, and I remember leaving the bank that day and I was like, wow, that's how the world works. Yes. Facts. That's funny, bro. So that's yeah. And, and like, you wouldn't know that if you didn't make that type of money, but that's a true story. I can't even make that up, but that's what happened. And I was like, and it was a real eye opener, you know? So, you know, it's just, but yeah. Scandalous. Something to, yeah, some some food for thought there, bro. You know what I mean? How many times have they asked you asked you about the Hector roll? Oh, How no, was man. it? How so Hector was roll it? is kind of funny, man. Just to break it down on that one, which I kind of laugh about. It's not like I was calling my manager, like, hey, if I'm not Hector, I'm not in this next movie, right? Of course not. Like, what the hell? Man, like, the, I I always say in Hollywood, they only know two names for Mexican actors: Hector and Carlos. Those Facts. Are, all the scripts that I got, I kid you not, 80% of them were Hector, Carlos, Hector, Carlos, Hector, Carlos. 80% of them. 
But anyways, um, the short story on that is it literally started off as a coincidence and it just kept on coincidentally happening. And then as it happened so much, I said, you know what? Let's just make it a thing. And that's how Hector got started. So now, quote unquote, when I do have power in some of the movies or television shows and I'm able to change my name, I tell them straight out in this movie or this television show, can we just make my name Hector and keep it like that? That's fire. And that's what I do. And some some say yes and some say no, but more say yes than no. Because in all honesty now, by being Hector, it kind of developed a quote unquote product. No, yeah, it's and, prestigious. And yeah, and now it's like whenever I'm Hector in a movie, people just want to watch it sometimes just because. No, I feel the know, vibes. You got a cult yeah, following for sure. It's just, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of it's kind of funny. So now I'm like, I'm starting to think Hector's my real name. That's how bad it is. Bro. I'm about to go to the DMV and make it my middle name. That'd be sick. <laughs> Get a trademark on that. What um? I'm ahead of you. Haha. <laughs> what is uh? What's a horror story that you have from the Fast and the Furious set? My child support cases. <laughs> <laughs> Fire. I was yeah, I was making babies on that set. Um, that was crazy. Yeah, bro. But that's that's true story right there. That know? probably must have been a wild set, like during the little car oh, meet scenes. We were scenes. wilding out, bro. We were on a whole nother page. Like honestly, Fast and the Furious, it was like getting paid to party. Like honest to God, like that's how I can say it. Like we literally were. Honestly, there was a moment. I kid you not on Fast and the Furious where I was like. I can't believe I'm getting paid for this because <laughs> we were just chilling, hanging out. As Literally. In fact, there was a scene that we did where uh, Paul Walker, rest in peace. Uh, uh, what happened was when he broke into the garage to break into my car. I remember this. Yes. So if you remember, he was in the building and he was looking down at us because he had to make sure that Hector's gang wasn't watching him yes. break in. Yes. And we were partying and hanging out. So the director. He put us right there and he said, give us about 10, 15 minutes while we set up the shot to uh, record this. Well, long story short, the shot was already set up. <laughs> he got us in the real moment of partying. <laughs> out. So 20 minutes later, they're like, All right, get he comes guys. and says, it's a wrap. You guys can go home. And we're like, what? What about the scene? And he's like, we shot it already. And we didn't even know. That's so tight. he just got the real. He got the organic of you food. I was chilling. like, that was so that scene's the real shit. You guys were just yeah. posted up on set. Waiting. Thought we were waiting for the real deal, but he was. Yeah. So that that scene there is 100 percent the legit. W were you able to bring any homies on set with you? I mean, and I don't mean just to chill. I mean, like in oh, yeah. that scene to participate day, as yeah. your homies. All the homies that are next to me are your homies. Are my homies. Yeah. That's love. Well, were were. I was only one that lasted. Uh, to today, but yeah. but in that instance, at least you were able to bring the people that you thought needed to be there with you. Oh, you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, 100%, and yeah, and that's love. Me. And you're blessed. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you got blessed me. for blessing them. You know what I'm saying? No cap. Yeah, they let me wild out, man. So yeah, a lot of the homies we brought were uh, the homies from the streets for real. So we got to make that scene look authentic. And uh, yeah, they were a lot of homies that came through. And so that was another thing that was crazy because a lot of the homies that were on set were homies. So we were just they're homies. Out. We're just wiling out, acting a fool. <laughs> Couldn't believe we're making a movie and getting paid at the same time for chilling. Who is the best person on that set, actor-wise? I don't mean acting-wise. I mean actor-wise. Like, who did you vibe with the hardest? Yeah, uh, Paul Walker and Vin Diesel. Paul Walker was so humble, bro. Like, he didn't care if you were the craft service person or the director of the film. He treated everybody the same. Um, Vin Diesel, too, as well. And uh, long story short, man, just those were the two that I... You know, Jai Rule, we kicked it a lot, too, uh, you know, on the side or whatever. But, uh, yeah, bro, I mean, everyone was cool and friendly at that time. You got to remember, too, something that uh, Paul Walker and Vin Diesel were not, quote, unquote, Paul Walker and Vin Diesel until that movie. No, of course, that, that made them. what put them on the map. Yeah, they put were, all of you guys on were, the map. They were already on the map before that. Yeah, but clearly. But I'm saying that's what elevated No, 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 absolutely. You know? That was their breakthrough role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the one that took them to the next level, so... Um, when we were making that movie, you know, it was first, it was even considered at the time an independent movie. No shit. We didn't think it was going to do what know, it did. What it did. And uh, but one of the reasons why I like that movie so much is because it was one of the first movies ever to put all the multicultural races together. That's valid. Mexican, white, black, Asian. Mm -hmm. And it was all not about race or whatever. It was about the love of the cars, you know? So that's another thing that it did. So that movie broke a lot of barriers is what I'm saying. Absolutely, it did. 
Yeah. Um, how many? How many? How many is there now? Like ten? I think there's. Uh, I'm not being sarcastic no, either. No, I'm no, like no, literally. I'm real with you. I, I think there's 137. <laughs> yeah, no, Are you in all of them? No, I'm just in part one and seven. Um, you know, legit. I always say this in the friendliest way possible, but I'm not a Fast and Furious fan of the later movies because it got to like, how do you go from racing cars to saving the world? It got to superhero for me. I got it. It got to Jet Li meets Rambo meets Transformers. So I'm not really like, I always tell people, if you like superhero movies, you'll love Fast and the Furious. If you like Marvel and DC, you'll love Fast and the Furious because that's what it became. Definitely part one is not that. No, that's what I'm saying. So I wish it goes back to the original roots or whatever. I think part 11 is um, Cars Underwater. Part 12 is Cars Meet Dinosaurs. <laughs> what a uh, dick. No, I'm just <laughs> they got in the DeLorean for one of them and yeah, went back to the dinos. Surprise. Uh, part 13 is Fast and Furious goes back in the time. I wouldn't be surprised. So. Yeah, it's, get, it's getting out there for me, bro. But, um, but they're I, definitely cashing the checks. I, yeah, I mean, Ludacris said it publicly. Ludacris, you know, so I could repeat, but he said it publicly. He goes, why do you guys question why we still make so many Fast and Furious movies? Because it makes money. Facts. That's it. He said it straight out. That's like kind of, I don't know. That's that's a rough answer, but but the facts are the facts. I know he gave the truth, and it, it, that movie is the highest money making movie for Universal Studios. Like Harry Potter, uh, Harry Potter is Warner Brothers, Fast and Furious uh, is Universal. So and is Universal there- has not done any other movie or franchise that's made more money for them than Fast and the Furious. Am I mistaken, or you were part of the Fast and the Furious ride at Universal Studios? No, I wasn't a part of that. No? Yeah, no, no. There's another homie that's in there that people confuse me with them, but no, it wasn't me. Uh, There was another homie that had a thing on there on that no, ride. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and some people think that's me, but no, it's another homie. No, you're definitely different looking. I grew up with that phone from where well, we're from the same place or whatever. Oh, okay, okay. But no, yeah, that's cool. So um, with that being said... <laughs> Fire away. Just, uh, <laughs> you felt it? I was like, it's coming. I heard it growl in the stomach. Oh, that's that happened in Bruce Almighty. I thought it was a different movie. The Jim Carrey. Hey, that's scandalous that I actually can anyways. Yeah, yeah. No, I already know. I already knew. What you were no, no, no. So like, yeah, yeah. how did you agree to that? I'm not saying you didn't do cool. It was funny. Yeah, yeah. I know it didn't really f- happen, but I mean. That was made up. That was made up on the set. But the reason why I didn't see anything bad about that. There's right? nothing bad. I just want to know no, how you felt about it. How did you agree to that? So I'm just saying. No, I felt that. I didn't that. see nothing bad on that. Is because he got his god powers and later he did like a magic trick. How can you pre- be mad at that? How can no? How can you prevent that? You get what I'm saying? Yes. Like it was done as a magic trick. Who presented that idea? Jim Carrey. <laughs> the bastard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. No, nah, no. Nah, Jim Carrey. Re- I was only supposed to work on that movie for one week, but we got seven weeks out of it. Hell Jim yeah. Jim Carrey kept on rewriting the scene. I like that. So, yeah. So was I, it a pain in the ass or was it cool? I, you're stupid, bro. <laughs> it was, that was a setup question. <laughs> this guy's a fool. That was, uh, that was a setup. <laughs> that was fire? Yeah, what? No, it, was, it was all right. It was average, bro. <laughs> 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 I give it a high six, low seven. That's cool. <laughs> no, no, it's because I hear these jokes all the time, bro. And it's like, oh, my God, bro. There's not one day I leave the house and don't hear about the monkey or the three spoon engines. Or, you know, it's a <laughs> blessing to do something years ago and still have it remembered today. No, it's shit's iconic. But it's hard to, like, you know, you can't laugh at it no more when you hear it every day. No, that's just like, yeah, good one, pal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally feel it. No, no, but... Was Jim cool to work with? Oh, hell yeah, bro. He's the friendliest guy in the world, dude. Because um, you see these new memes about him that are, like, super... Um, I like where Jim is at now. Exactly, now he's exactly. Door. Yeah, but he was... No, he was still a humble dude back then, and... Uh, it still is, you know, he was a humble guy. Like, I'll tell you a quick uh, true story with Jim. So we have the scene where we beat him up. <laughs> and that's why he gets his revenge with yes. the monkey and he gets us with the bugs and all that, whatever. But anyways, when we first beat him up, we were very delicate because we're like, it's Jim Carrey. We don't want to hurt him. So yeah. we went very delicate. The know, director was like, again. We took it easy. No, no, Jim Carrey. He goes, uh, come on, guys. Like, do it like you're from the streets for real. Like, (laughs) do it the right way. So we're like, all right. So we just let loose on him on the second take. And then he was like, all right, go back to the first way. (laughs) Jim Carrey was a cool cat to work with. That's fire. That guy hooked us up, bro. He got a Baja Fresh truck on set. He said lunch is for free all day long. We were able to go up to the, he got an In-N-Out Burger truck. 
That's uh, dope. We were on the set for seven weeks. Why does it sound like an independent movie? He produced this movie himself? I think he knew, man. And, and what's crazy about that movie, that movie was the highest money-making movie of all movies in 2003. That's dope. The highest grossing box the, office. Uh, of all movies, bro. Horror. Mm -hmm. drama, no, period. Action, period. Like highest that. grossing movie of 2003, period. Yeah, that was it right there. That's fire. And I think he knew that because that's the time when he was rocking and rolling, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, and it was just funny, man. Like that's dope to be able to say you're a part of that. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. So I've I've been because those are classical scenes that you're in. It's not like those are just some bullshit blur in the background scenes. Not that I've ever seen you do anything even remotely close to that. But facts yeah, are no, that I've been very blessed with with my career and a lot of the stuff that I've been able to do and have done, and very thankful. So what's one of your favorite roles? Well, what uh, is your favorite role? I know they're all Hector's food, but like, which which version? Uh, not all Hector, 75% of my friends, all, <laughs> all 75%. But um, I don't know. I would say probably like uh, Training Day, Bruce Almighty, Fast and the Furious. And then I've got to Classics. do some other scenes, uh, some other movies, you know, closer today, to today's date. Yes. That uh, I've been very blessed with. Some stuff that hasn't come out yet, some stuff that has come out. But um, I don't know, man. I mean, again, I for me, this is just... A fun business to be in because again it's never the same thing it's yes. always different people uh, the way i say it though just to be clear i say it's always the best worst best business to be in so but yeah what is the worst movie you've ever been in and i don't mean how it performed oh yeah yeah don't worry i got a saying bro and i say this i say sometimes i'm in a movie where the movie sucked but the check didn't suck uh -huh. so that's i mean experience wise yeah um i mean to be honest man I've been in a couple movies where uh, I've had some some bad experiences, not with the movie itself, yes, but with the people behind the scenes, things like that. And is it usually with what, like producers or? Nah, it's just people in general. It could be producers, actors, director. It just, you know, there's a lot of cutthroat in this business, and that's what sucks. So, you know, you just got to be careful of how you maneuver how you maneuver yeah i feel that you got to be like maverick you know have you had the same manager slash agent or have you gone through a couple no i've always had well when i first started i had a bunch of agents because i had nothing to lose at that time uh -huh. I just went gung-ho fuck it but as i started getting quote unquote more known i had to narrow down to one of course and um but then my agent uh passed away from cancer rest in peace like a mom to me and, uh, yeah, she's still alive in my heart. Nancy Chidas, give you a shout out since I'm talking about you right here. Absolutely. Of, she was, what I loved about her is she was one of the only agents in Hollywood who took on a bunch of Mexican cholos. That's right. And her son herself was a Mexican cholo. That's, that's right. How I met her to begin with through her son, and she was the only one who took on, you know, Mexicans. When there was a lot of agents back in those days who was not taking us on. Mm -hmm. So she was one of the few. She was like literally one of the needles in a haystack. And uh, now her daughter takes over, Maria Chides, but she passed away from cancer. So now I'm with Gloria Hinojosa, which is my new agent, which is also a blessing as well. Amazing. Love my agent. Uh, my agent handles, uh, I'm with the same agent that uh, handles Danny Trejo. Well, that's dope. Millie Rivera. Amazing. So, yeah, so I've been very blessed to have her in my corner because, and those are the t only two agents that I've ever had in my whole life. Perfect. That I've been faithful to. That's very, dope. I'm very faithful, so that's my that's my thing. Loyalty is a virtue, my friend, and Loyalty that's is hard to find. and that's dope that you have it in you. Damn, that's crazy. Loyalty that, will get you farther than anything else because you can't buy a reputation. Facts. Um, talk, talk to me about uh, your relationship with God. I feel like um, that was kind of well, I wouldn't say random, but I remember one time you came to speak at our school, and. Uh, <laughs> You were um you were just you know telling us about you know the come up and stuff like that, but you didn't mention God, and it, I didn't see you mention God later until I seen you really talk about him on Instagram. So talk to me about that. How'd you get so close? Um, so in the schools, you're not allowed to talk about God. Mm. I was actually instructed not to talk about God because it gets into a very fine line with pushing your belief upon students who might have other different beliefs from ever, from their parents or their families or whatever else, right? So you're not, you have to come in strategically and you're just not allowed to. So I gave the wisdom of God, but I didn't get to give the credit to God. You know what I'm saying? 
But I, I think I did, because usually when I go to schools, I at least say, you know, God first. I at least say, like, a little something. Yeah, a little something. Kinda, something. Just to kind of do the Jesus Christ knockout punch, right? That's right. Even though they say it. And I can get away with it, quote, unquote, you know, because... It's not a whole thing, yeah. Yeah, you don't, you know, I don't shove it down their throat. You know what I'm saying? You mm. saw it, bro, so I... I but, um, yeah, bro, I, I knew God when I was 15 years old, and then Hollywood kicked off. And uh, I'll be straight up, and I got all the money, saw the short skirts in the party, and turned my back on God. Mm. I don't need God no more. 20 years, I was just wilding out, partying, acting a fool. And then in 2008, that's when I came back to God full force, not playing with them in full integrity. And the proof of integrity is a change in the lifestyle. Facts. You know, so if someone is saying, oh, I love God, and woo, 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 but they're still living the same lifestyle, then that puts a question on it. If, if you're really loving God, there's a change in your heart. There's a renewal in your mind. There's a renewal in the way you speak. There's a different lifestyle that starts gradually, slowly taking place. And that's the proof of God in someone's life is their lifestyle and how they live, what they do, et cetera, et cetera. No one's perfect, but there's a change of heart, you know? So, yeah, man, I just, the reason why I picked God uh, to keep it real and to be straight up is because when you really get to know God, he just makes sense. Mm. And that and that's it. And when I started serving God, I came in, man, I had 30,000 questions. You know what I mean? I, you know, is drinking a sin, is smoking a sin, is why is sex out of marriage a sin? Why this, why that? If there really is a God, dinosaurs, UFO. Like I had 30,000 questions. I always tell people straight up, the stupidest question is the one that you do not ask. Facts. If you don't know something, you need to ask. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So when I came in and I started serving God, and really was genuine about it, wanting to know him. Um, and I started getting the answers that I was getting. It just made sense to me. And I was like, you know what? Like, and, and God himself, you know, says that the devil is the author of confusion. So if there's any confusion in the way that you think or whatever have you, it's because maybe you haven't let God cleared it up yet. You've been hearing everybody else's voice, everybody else's opinion, other than the one voice that matters only which is god and god himself so that's that's you know that's just things that you learn as you go i, I tell people like this i'll just i'll close with this and then i know you guys will have other questions whatever maybe or maybe not but i'll just i'll close with this i tell people there's four steps to getting to know god the first step that i would tell people straight up straight out is i would even tell you guys straight up straight out right now and everybody watching i would say don't even trust god uh -huh. don't even trust him right now forget about trusting him right now just get to know him and as you get to know them, you'll start to trust them. And then what do you do when you start trusting someone? You start having love for that person. And then what do you do when you start having love for that person? You eventually fall in love with that person. And when you fall in love with God, that's how God keeps you straight down here because you know you can hide something from me, you can hide something from him, and vice versa, we can hide something from people that no matter where you go in a dark room alone, in the closet alone, wherever you're at, bathroom alone, whatever, you can't hide it from God. So now you're not just hurting, you know, whoever you're hurting God because you're in love with them. You don't want to hurt who you love. Mm. So that's why I just let people know, you know, Fire. Them, those are the four steps. Just get to know them. Then you'll start trusting them. Then you'll start loving them. And eventually when you fall in love with them, that's what will start shaping up your walk in life, how you do things differently, how you think differently, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Was there a turning point in 2008 that made you want to oh, seek God again? What was? Can you talk about that? Yeah, 100%. So in 2008, um, I, uh, I I changed a lot of things in my lifestyle. So that's why I don't smoke no more. Absolutely. I stopped smoking in 2008. And, and, and again, I want to make this clear, too. Everything that I'm saying comes with no judgment. I'm no better than anybody else. No, yeah, of course. I, I've done everything that uh, – sorry, dude. I, I have a, what I say comes with no judgment. You know what I mean? I don't judge anybody because I've been there, done that. And I've, you know, done a lot of things in my life that I get it. I get it. You know, we all mess up in life, whatever. Uh, hopefully we learn from our mess ups, right? But um, in 2008, I had a big turning point because there was this guy that I met and there was something different about him. He was truly like a light in the dark. And I got sick and tired of the people who say and don't do, people of, who just were not in integrity, backstabbers, cutthroaters, all that stuff, whatever, two-face. And this guy, he was none of that stuff. 
And one day I was like, man, I want to I wanna work with you, bro, because I see something different in you that's different from the people in the world. And I remember he set me up and he told me, you know, I got to go with them to this Christian seminar. Anyways, the fast forward, that's where I got saved, mm. turned my life over to God and said, I'm not going to play with you no more. So there was a lot of things in my life that I stopped doing. I got married, stopped drinking, stopped smoking, never went to a casino because I had a gambling problem too. Mm. Um, never fought. I can't say that I didn't cuss, but I cussed a lot less than what I used to because I used to have a mouth like a sailor. Now, you know, I cuss, but like 20% of the time as opposed to 80% of the time. There was just things that I just tried to turn around in my life of what I was doing before that I was no longer doing. And that's why I talk about the transformation. You know, once you get to know God, how it starts getting proved in your lifestyle. Make sense? Mm. How old were you when you saw him? Um, or what year was it when you saw him at the school? Uh, 20. How old are you, G? 29. So this was like 20. Graduated 2012. So 2012. Oh. Yeah. You want to tell that story that you told me? Oh, no. So you came to speak. It was in front of the senior class in the cafeteria. So he's like the voice behind the mic, and he's, his face has never been seen. Never been seen. Okay, that's so what's up. <laughs> I love it. Go ahead. So you I'd be catching all the stray bullets for him. Yeah. It's rough. You get compensated <laughs> well. It's okay. <laughs> so anyways, you came, you came to speak at the cafeteria. It was just a senior class. What school was it real quick? It was in. Okay, go ahead. And uh, you had came to speak or whatever, and um, you had told us your come up story, pretty much talking about how you transitioned from the streets to becoming an actor. And then um, while you were telling that story, someone in the crowd was all like, "Oh, you're a ranker!" <laughs> like out loud, stupid ass kid. And then it was funny because you checked them like real quick in front of everybody too, in front of the principals and stuff. I was like, "Hey, homie, ain't no rank like something to the effect of, hey, homie, ain't no ranker over here.' Yada yada yada." And he just stood quiet. And I'm like, damn, did this fool just really check him in front of like, the principal, <laughs> in front of the teachers? I'm like, damn, this fool's still with it. <laughs> he was barely starting his reacquaintancing with God. Yeah, I don't even remember, bro. He was yeah. practicing the Old Testament. <laughs> how, how old are you? 29. Oh, you're 29, yeah. No, I, you know, it's it's funny, bro. It's just So that was like a decade ago type shit. Yeah. yeah. Or I, more. Like, do people like uh like try to test you because like you're now a man of God and like they feel like they can get away with saying certain oh, things? All day long, all day long. Mm. That's stupid. You're gonna get tested till the day you die, bro. But you know, I always tell people this, bro. If you're serving God correctly, one hundred percent truly the way that you should be serving God, you're not gonna be the most popular person. Mm. <sighs> Fire. <laughs> Would you the bottom line. would you say that um, this current era of Hollywood, I guess, is more open to giving brown people bigger chances? Um, like the way it's moving, the Hot Cheetos movie, the Mayans, and all this other stuff. Yeah. With, <laughs> Where are you going? No, no, it's, it's <laughs> funny because um, there's something that Hollywood taught me straight up. One is this: they're profiting off whatever's hot. No, no. Uh, the what? Say it again? Go ahead. Do oh, your go thing. Ahead, go ahead. I said profiting off of whatever's hot. Oh, that's, that's before nowadays. That's basic. that's forever. Yeah, yeah that was basic. My bad, my bad. Film. I'm going to take this out of the clip yeah, right there. Don't trip. Since, <laughs> that's been some silent film, bro. That's <laughs> but um, no, one thing that Hollywood has taught me is that uh, unless you know someone personally uh, or are involved in the situation personally, you don't know a damn thing. I don't care what podcast you've seen, what interview you've seen, what magazine article you read, what news you know clipping you saw, whatever. If you were not involved personally or know someone personally, you don't know a damn thing. All you have is an idea of what's been put out on Front Street, period. And what I tell people, it's funny. So like, and this is sad to say, bro, but I'm just going to keep it 100. I'm going to give you guys real spit truth. Like, it's sad to say, but I'm just keeping it. I, 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 there's nothing I can. Other, I always tell people this, bro. If you're going to hate me, you're going to hate me for two reasons. You're going to hate me because I was too truthful with you and you couldn't handle it. Or you just came up with your own story on why you hate me. I like That's it. it. Period. So I just tell people straight up raw truth. But the truth of it is, as sad as it is to say, I got farther in this business because of white and black people not my own people. Mm. And I was trying to help my own people 
back in the days. But the problem was, and this happens in any race, just so we're clear. Back in the days, people would, you know, cutthroat, two-faced, backstab, whatever, right? So now, I don't care what color you are. Before, I used to be so down for my people, and I still am. But that's not the overall case is what I'm getting at. I'm just down for anybody who has a righteous heart and a righteous mindset, regardless of what color they are. They could be black, brown, yellow, Asian, black, white, Mexican. They could be a UFO from outer space. If they got a right heart set and a right mindset, I'm down for that individual, regardless of what color they are, to help them. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's right. My, that's my take because I've seen uh, it's the individual. It's, and that's why I love the Bible so much because Jesus doesn't talk about the color of a person. He talks about the heart of a person. And so that's why, you know, for me, man, that's like, you know, I always tell people before you mess with anybody in business, you should do a heart check and a personality check first before even messing with them. And I'll give you guys just one true uh, quick example and I'll keep it super short. So we had a company back in the days called Suspect Entertainment. Of course. And we were putting real gangsters in the movies to authenticate it, to make it real. Mm -hmm. So we were putting prisoners in movies and, you know, real homies from the streets in movies, everything, right? And I was helping people, cold turkey. Now, I wasn't even fully in yet. I, I was, like, just starting myself. But I was like, man, I help you, I help you, I help you. I took everybody in. It's okay to have a good heart, but you got to protect that heart. So true story is fast forward, and here's the end of it. I was helping people get into acting for free. I was just, help, I was like getting you in, getting you in, right? That's love. Hooking people up. And it, it, it is love until this though. So then I would start getting taught crap on or two-faced or backstabbed or even worse, I was helping people for free. And when people found out that it wasn't as easy as they thought it was. It was your fault. To be an, no, not my fault. To, to be an actor or whatever, they would just quit on me cold turkey after putting a year or two years blood, sweat, and tears into them. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm like, what do you mean you're quitting, bro? I, I just put blood, sweat, and the tears into you. Been helping you for a year, two years to get in this business. Been hooking you up left and right doing this. And now you're just going to walk away and go get a job with what? Like, what? So now I charge people to help them. You know why? Because if I get backstabbed or two-faced or people quit on me, I could care less. I got paid for my time. Mm, facts. And that's... That's what life has taught me. So I tell people straight up, man, before you mess with anybody, do a heart check and a personality check first. Know who you're helping and why. And um, the whole thing about Latinos and all this stuff on the map, I care less, dude, what, as long as you got a right mindset and a right. But the only way I would know genuinely if someone has a right heart mindset and, uh, and all that is by me getting to know them. If I help them before I got to know them, that's my fault for where they're at. So you just help, you know, you could be helping the wrong people. And that's just one thing that I learned. So now when people come at me for help, there's two ways to help. I can go help in a sense of I do a thing like at the school, do a thing. I give you wisdom. You take it or throw it in the trash, use it in your life or not, and you go do it or not. That's one way to help. But if you get my intimate time, you get my personal time, and I'm helping you on that level, that's going to go a whole other different route. Because I'm not giving my personal time or intimate time anymore to anyone or helping anyone unless I know who that individual is and why I'm helping them and why. And I did a heart check and a personality check first. Can't be mad at that. Because I used to help people cold turkey, and you know that's what it was, so... There were so many people, they had fancy speeches, fancy interviews. I want to change my life. I want to do this. I want to help people. I want to, okay. And then you would help them, and you find out they're the biggest pieces of crap in the world. But that was my fault for helping them because I didn't know who I was helping and why. So, you know, God has really showed me a lot. I credit a lot of this to God, life experiences. And ever since I got to know God and his word, that's how you can have better discernment in people. By what they say, what yeah. they do, who they are, who to mess with, who not to mess with, et cetera, et cetera. And it doesn't mean necessarily that people are bad people, et cetera, et cetera. It's just you're not my cup of tea. That's not my brand. 
I, I wouldn't help you in the direction you're going because that's not my calling in life to help you with what you're trying to do. <laughs> you're going to have to find help from someone else, somewhere else. Hmm. This is deep. It's a deep one today. I like it. Yeah, I just don't care anymore, bro. That's why I tell people like. That's the best way. I know, bro. And that's, but you know, you don't get like that until you get jaded in life and taught some hard lessons that teach you and kind of shape and mold you, you know, moving forward. And I'm sure you still learn a couple lessons now. You'll learn until the day you die. Bro. Facts. I mean, I, even when I die, I don't know it all. I feel it. What kind of questions do you have, main fool? This is a super top fool. This might have been the first fool. This is the first <laughs> fool. Oh, fire. No, so it's the fool community. Right. I'm the top fool. I oh, run the okay. fuck, you know, but that's the main fool. You're the, the first. Behind the <laughs> that's the wizard <laughs> of fools. Guys, these guys are wild. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's right, bro. Now we hit a, now we hit a, now we hit a, uh, uh -huh. Spark right there. You're, the, you're the Wizard of Oz behind the behind the mic, the curtain. All we see is a shadow right there. And we, Just the Tin Man right here in front of the logo, bro. But you're the first fool. Now I'm catching on, bro. Now I'm catching on. <laughs> you're definitely one of the first fools. I got gotcha. you. I go with the flow, man. I mean, now you're doing great. It's cool if not, no worries. What do you got for this fine gentleman? The flow. I try to ride. What you got next? As far as projects, projects, uh, anything you're working on, with Quavo and John Travolta called Fire. Cash Out. It's gonna That's be right. coming, and then the Mayans that just finished. Mm. Um, got some other projects that are dropping, bro. But if you guys got Instagram, I gotta give it a shout out. You guys really want to keep up with me? Do so on my Instagram, actor Noel G, actor Noel G, one word, actor Noel G, and uh, oh, I worry. drop everything right there of what's popping, what's cracking, what's coming out. Um, there's a lot of projects that are in the mix right now. We're in the middle of a documentary. Uh, we got a couple movies that are in the mix that we're in the middle of working on. Um, there's a lot of stuff that uh, is kind of silent right now because of the strike. Oh. So that's why I can't talk about it right now on the podcast because we're in the middle of that and we're not allowed to promote. But um, there's a lot of stuff that uh, is coming out that we are doing. But right now, because of the circumstances, there's just certain things I can't mention. Mm. How did you enjoy? So obviously we know you enjoyed your time on uh, on Fast, the Fast series. How did you, how do you enjoy your time uh, doing the Mayan stuff? Oh, the Mayans was hecka cool, man. Like, you know, to be a part of that project, I was very blessed, man, to be in that and be a part of that. Because that's, that's definitely one for the books. So <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. I haven't watched this new season that came out. And I was, I'm not even, I wasn't, are you, you needed some more water? <coughs> no, I think my voice is coming back. Like it just does it like that sometimes. I like it. Yeah. Um, would you say, uh, what was your role in the, in the mines? Cause like I said, I haven't, yeah, been... I just played one of the street gangsters. I wasn't one of the biker main dudes or whatever. Oh, you're a street gangster. Yeah. I was a street gangster in that one. From the How dogs rare. Crew. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, bro. But I mean, that's the thing, you know, to be in the career and to be able to be a part of this franchise, that franchise, that franchise that, fire. That's where I've been very blessed, you know, and very thankful. So then you would say that the type you can fully embrace the typecast uh oh yeah yeah yeah. because i mean yeah someone's gonna do it you know what i mean like if might they, as well be you getting that bread yeah yeah i like i like you know uh, social media to me is a curse and a blessing absolutely you know, it, it 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 you know, that's a whole nother podcast right but yes my point is what i like about social media is that when you asked about the latinos and whatever this is the thing right so you know, what, what bugs me about Hollywood, just to keep it 100, is the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy in Hollywood is what just eats me up and I can't stand it. There's a lot of people that I knew uh, before they became quote unquote somebody, just to keep it 100% real. And they're not who they're claiming to be on social media. And I know them behind the curtain. And that's why I, you know, it just eats me up. But we have, just to say it straight up without saying names, there's Latinos out there right now that are saying, oh, I was always about the Latino people, and I always wanted to help the Latino people, and they're, they're bull crap. No, no, you're not, because you could have done that 20 years ago. So now with social media, the only reason why they're, oh, I'm all about the Latino people is because now there's so many of us that we cannot not be ignored. 
we can't be ignored. There's so many of us out there where now it's like, oh, now we can't ignore these people. Like, we have to be about them or we look like haters. And it's just so fake. And I, I it eats me up, bro. And because I know some of the behind the curtain stuff, <laughs> you know, but then it sucks too on the flip side. Because if you're the one who says it first, you're the bad guy. Because you spoke, you know, and that's why it's just, oh, this business is, that's why I said from the starting, it's the best, worst, best business to be in. And the hypocrisy eats me up on a whole another level that I just can't stand. So that's why I just, you know, stick to yourself, do what you do. And the blessing of social media is now you're able to create your own lane. You don't need, quote unquote, big name guy, big name girl to make it. You could create your own deal now, you know, and it's just, it's a mess. And that's why I, that's why I said what I said with more of an understanding now. Yes. If you don't know someone personally or we're not involved in the situation personally, you don't I really shit. care less what the hell you think because I don't even know if you're real or not unless I was personally involved or personally know you. And that's why I say it's so important to personally get to know someone or know the situation because unless you were in it, you don't. And that's why, like, I see some of the actors that come out on Front Street and producers and directors and other people in the business, music artists or whatever, and they say what they say. And on a podcast and an interview, it sounds so beautiful. Sounds so magical. <laughs> but behind the curtains, I'm like, dude, you ain't nothing of what you're talking about, bro. Our, our, our girl. And it's just funny to me. So that's why I just, oh, man, the, the, the hypocrisy in this business eats me up. And, but, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, just, I just can't stand it, bro. So that's for me. I'd, I'd rather be alone, do my own stuff. And I care less what people think because that's why the only person who has to know who you are is yourself and God, bro. Mm. Facts. The, the hypocrisy that you speak about, are you talking about Hollywood in general or are you talking about other Latinos? Hypocrisy is anywhere, bro. Mm. I'm talking about just Hollywood because that's my specific career. But hypocrisy is anything. You could work at Walmart as a cash register person. There's hypocrisy there. It's anywhere, but I'm just making a point. He was talking about Hollywood in general, but he was specifically talking about Latinos that are all barely, of a sudden one barely of caring culture they could have put us on years ago Yeah, because mm. see some of the things is some of those latinos that are out there speaking just to keep it 100 i went to in the earlier days no love and, and for this uh, cholito well it was none none at all bro and it was funny and i you know i i had I, I, had, fools. I had an unargumentative pitch that there's no way you can say no to that. And I'll tell you what it is straight up because I don't care. I've said it already. Other, I, 20 years ago, well, whenever Friday came out, yeah, what I was trying, and I went to some big people with big names who are still alive today, you know, with power, and they had power back then as well. I said, we got to do a Mexican version of Friday, but we have to do an authentic Mexican version of Friday where it's authentic to the streets, authentic where it's just hood and the way we talk crap. And basically I said, it's just... A black version of Friday, but with Mexicans. A Mexican version of Friday, but with Mexicans. And I went to some powerful people that are claiming, like, I've been for the Latino people. My And I got, I just get passionate when I talk about that stuff. And that's why, you know, again, all are, I could do is take it back to God. God has showed me how to, when you know God's word, you can uh, disearn people a lot easier. Facts. Than how you could without God. That's true. Have you had any aspirations to fulfill that to fulfill that dream right there? Oh yeah, we're still yeah we're we're pushing for it. There's like I said, there's some stuff I can't discuss here, but absolutely. Oh okay, I totally feel it. Say no more. But there's stuff taken forward. Yeah. Say no more. That's amazing, and congrats on that in advance because that's well, we already amazing. did it actually. There's it's already out there. <laughs> one of them. It's it's yeah, but um, I only because of the strike, I can only say a few things right now. No, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. In those areas of promoting certain things. No, I totally feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's on strike right now? Is it the Actors Guild? Uh, the actors, Writers Guild? Directors, writers. Oh, everyone. Yeah, we pretty much all got together. Who's we're, left? The fucking gaffers? <laughs> we're going hard, bro. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's scandalous because those fools still got to clean up the shit. That's crazy. That's hilarious. Yeah, That's messed up. <laughs> It's getting ugly though, bro. It, and it's a trickle effect, you know. Now some of the hotels are striking. Yeah. Some of the FedEx and UPS people are striking. It's just and it's it's gonna start it's gonna start chaos, you know, to be on pretty soon. People are not gonna rob you for money. They're gonna rob you for a cheeseburger. 
because they're they gonna get hungry and they gonna want to eat. I feel that attitude. <laughs> and then you guys went way out of the way too, bro. Because I saw this. You guys are really trying to make me feel at home. <laughs> <laughs> so, I fucking forgot that. that that was there. They got the they got the Nas tank, man. The three spoon engines are right here. <laughs> we only need two more, and we got them all. But I was this one. We got hands and eyes, and yeah, I was like. I know you guys are trying to go out of the way, making me feel at home, bro, but this is a little too much. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> that was fire. That's what's up. Uh, don't is, let me take that home, by the way. No. Is there any... <laughs> I like that. I'm playing. Is there anything you want to leave the people with before we clock out, my brother? Uh, Yeah, you know, I just tell people straight up, man. Um, the things I said about the four steps on getting to know God, um, just, uh, you know, get to know him. And when you get to know him, you'll start to trust them. And when you start to trust them, you'll start having love for them and you'll eventually fall in love with them. And that's what will keep your heart straight, your mind straight. Um, and uh, the thing that I always say is just, you know, put God in your heart, uh, give him time of day so he can give you time of day and he can start making what's out of order in your life back into order. The reason why a lot of us are not blessed in life is because we chase the blessings of the world. And if you chase the blesser first, the blessings of the world, they'll chase you. You don't got to chase them. So that's why I always let people know, man. But And, and a lot of people, they want to be blessed. But you can't be blessed if you're living your life out of order because God cannot bless disorder. He can only bless what's in order. So the more that you start getting to know him and trusting him and start doing it his way instead of your own way, you'll start realizing that you're putting your life back into order. And when you're putting your life back into order one piece at a time, that's when the blessings just pour in and you start seeing a life change. So that's what I always like to leave the people with, man. And um, that's a personal relationship. And uh, all I can really say in all honesty, man, is I'm encouraging people on my journey now. Uh, you know, I don't care what I'm thought about. I don't care what people think about me or say about me. I only care what God thinks. I'm not in it for the audience of the world. I'm in it for the audience of one, which was God. And long story short, man, um, I just say put God in your heart, man. Get to know God. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Jesus Christ is the only one that can save you. And, um, you know, I hope you guys take that home with you. So I always say, instead of keeping a gangster, keep it Godster. So those are my last words, man. I like it. I highly appreciate you for joining us here at the Fool Community. You had a lot of uh, wise words for us, and and yeah, man, we're blessed to have you. It's all love, my G. Thank the first fool. For, uh, yeah, man, Fool's Community. Give them a shout out, man. Uh, continue watching their stuff. Continue supporting them, man. They got more heat, more fire coming at you. And uh, long story short, man, it was a blessing to be here as well. Thank you guys for reaching out. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. I appreciate it, man. I came to show love. And uh, you guys have done nothing but showing respect, and I wanted to respect that back. So thank you guys, and uh, much love. And thank you to the fans, because without you guys, we couldn't do what we do on this side. Absolutely. So much love, and uh, now we out. Peace.